Hello and welcome back to my channel. After talking about it for a long time, I finally decided to bite the bullet and start uploading deck text from some of my favorite EDH decks in my collection. And since I just can't seem to stop tinkering with my Kalia the Vast deck, um, I decided to start with a deck that pretty much doesn't change very often, although as we return to Innistrad, who knows. Um, this is my mono black zombie deck. Commander is Liliana Heretical Healer, who transforms into Liliana Defiant Necromancer. Now the reason she's the commander of this deck is I like her as both a creature and a planeswalker. Her lifelink really takes the burden off of uh, some of the other cards in this deck in the early game because I have things like Graveborn Muse that will you know, cost me life for cards or something like Shepherd of Rot, which will turn sideways and do a lot, uh, life loss to everyone on the board. So she actually does help as a creature more than you expect. And as soon as she transforms, she gets cards into my graveyard, gets cards into the opponent's graveyard. Obviously, you know, she can resurrect things um, later down the line. So she's, she's just good, fair utility. And she I don't need... You know her ultimate to go off to be functional as a commander planeswalker that's really what this is about um so let's start of her i went out of my way to get the nice foil version because this is probably my favorite liliana art you know if you guys have seen i have a play mat of this and it looks great in foil and on one of these uh, dragon shield uh, clears they look really nice I basically always put most of my commander decks, almost all of them, in Dragon Shields. The rest of the deck is Jet Matt. Uh, Jet Matt. And I keep it in a Black Satin Tower. Alright, well, we're going to start with the lands. There we go. So. I'm not one to run a lot of the utility lands that a lot of people like to strip mine. Um, stuff like that, Reliquary Tower in monocolor decks. I tend to keep it very simple. Now, this deck is a, is a mono black zombie deck, but it also has heavy sub themes of Swamp's Matter. So you're gonna see a lot of basic lands in this deck. Um, the Swamp theme is very important to some of the bigger swinging your cards. So I try to stay away from non-basics, especially ones that won't really help me in a pinch. Uh, Bajuka Bog, I love being able to nuke somebody's graveyard. Um, Almost every deck I have that runs black runs one of these, and I think a lot of EDH players do that. Cabal Coffers. Um, I got this when it came out all the way back in Torment. Um, I love this card. Loved it from day one. Oh, man, the glare on this light. Make it any better? Yeah. Jeez. So... Cabal Coffers, obviously, you know, any mono-colored black deck should be running this thing if they can afford it. I, I was lucky enough to crack many back in the day, so there you go. So I tend to have more of these things than I should. Um, Cabal Stronghold, uh, not quite Cabal Coffers, but especially if I don't have Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth in play, I, I can tap for the colorless, unlike uh, Cabal Coffers, but it, it does the same thing, so... More of a really good thing. Oh, that, that seemed to work. All right. Castle Lothwain. Um, yeah, just, just a nice little card value. Sometimes this deck has a full graveyard and an empty hand, so just a couple different ways to deal with it. You know, I really like this card. Dark Depths. Late game, this deck can generate a ton of mana. Actually, in the mid game and early game as well, if I'm lucky. Um, so sometimes I just like having a nice emergency button uh, sink for a lot of that mana. So this this is basically a, a threat on the table. It's not it's not a win con by any means. Everglades. I mean, you know, it just puts me ahead on mana. I like these in multicolor decks, and that's why they came in the 2014 Commander decks. There's one card I might like as much as Cabal Coffers. It's Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. 
Um, I love devotion. I love permanence. I love a full, uh, you know, side of the table. So I, I think devotion was just an awesome idea. So I've loved this card since it was printed. Thorny Glaciers. Um, old school card. I actually got this before the, uh, all the land heavy uh, craze that happened about in, I want to say that was um, the new Zendikar set. Adventures in Zendikar? I forget. But I got this thing way back in the day just because I wanted to be able to get a ton of swamps, you know, quickly. Westvale Abbey. Get a lot of peons in this deck. A lot of zombie tokens. So just, just another nice way to to pay off that, you know, into Ormondal Profane Prince. Just a couple of different dangerous things to, to fend off a couple of players um, when you're trying to get your engine going, which is Cottage. It works as a swamp, so I'm fine with that. And, you know, the resurrection ability. Again, it, it's, it's not a debilitating card if it doesn't work. Urborg, you know. This just, again, every black deck should have one of these. And a ton of swamps. I tend, I tend to run 37 lands in this, so. Yeah, so 28 swamps. You know, one, two, three. 28 swamps plus uh, 11 other cards. Live in other lands. You know. It's a really powerful mana base. I really don't get screwed almost ever with this deck. Let's move on to the artifacts. Soul Ring. You know. Who doesn't? Honestly. You know. Needs no introduction. The Jet Medallion. Oh boy. I just didn't think. I don't. Don't ask me why. I just didn't think these were that good when I first saw it. But. The medallions are insane in EDH. Grimoire of the Dead. Um, if there's one card that I'm still iffy on, whether or not it should be here, it's this one. If I have the cards to do it, it's fine. But sometimes I just have better ways of getting stuff into the graveyard. Like my commander. Um, but it can do its job. It hasn't let me down. I've never lost a game because it was around. So, um, Nyx Lotus. Again, huge on devotion. I love this thing. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Caged Sun. Okay, so... Whenever I get it into play, it is debilitating and game-changing. But there have been times where it just sits in my hand. But, you know, I've, I've won because of it. I've never lost because of it, so... On to Planeswalkers. You know, just the idea here, obviously, just ramping up that mana. You know, cheapening spells. Just a lot. There, you're going to find a lot of my sorceries and instants are big X spells. So, Liliana, the last hope. Boy, this one ability pays off so much. I love this card. Um, the other two are just gravy on top. Um, just filling up your graveyard. Uh, dragging back zombies. If you get if you if I get the ultimate, great. But really, it's those first two. Um, Liliana of the Dark Realms. So again, the swamp search is the main thing. You know, I just I love that ability, and in this deck, it's very powerful. Liliana untouched by death. Um, I just love the simplicity of her negative three. Just cast zombie cards from my graveyard this turn. Although, number two will kill things much more rapidly than I thought they would. Um, you know, with a lot of gods and indestructibles in EDH, this can be surprisingly effective. Um, Liliana's Death Majesty. This and Dreadhorde General, just a plus one. E even, you know, with the uh, putting two into the graveyard, just plus one create a zombie. J just, this deck is so efficient with that kind of engine that I, I love both of them also the idea that each player sacrifices two creatures even though this is one more expensive you know i like the card draw ability you know it may seem a little redundant running both of them but they've both helped me so many times and now 
we get to the other creatures in the deck. This is going to be fun. All right. One of the greatest zombies ever printed the Grave Crawler. What can you say about this thing? You know, it just it, it comes back so often because of the way this deck runs. Shepherd of Rot. Again, this thing is swingy and it will kill players and myself if I'm not careful. Um, so again, lifelink cards, um, heretical healers, lifelink abilities. Just this this thing has decided tables for me before. Relentless Dead. Um, this is a fun little zombie that just refuses to go away. Or, you know, it can decide to stay in the graveyard and help someone else. You know, I really like that versatility. Burnished Heart, again, something to uh, just get more swamps onto the field. Lord of the Accursed. I wasn't really big on this card because I, I never really bought into Menace. You know, I, I miss simple fear and protection from black and that kind of stuff. But man, th this has swung some games for me against bigger, you know, monsters that I just probably should have been killed by. Unbreathing Horde. I really I really like Unbreathing Horde. Um, sometimes in the late game, it doesn't quite pack the same, or in the early game, it doesn't pack the same punch, but this, this is a brutal late game bruiser. Diagraph Colossus. Um, I love that these, uh, most of this deck has such a low curve, which just allows you to do so much more with, an, with a big hand. Um... I love casting this thing after a board wipe and the added token it gives me whenever I cast a zombie on top of that means that even if the graveyard is empty when it hits the battlefield it still does something that's really the the key reason it's still in the deck uh, Lord of the Undead original plane shift version um, just what's not to love about this thing what is not to love Cemetery Reaper um, I really like that I can um, target enemy cards in other graveyards. You know, that's really what does it. Uh, I like to resurrect too many cards. Um, I'm really... A couple of cards I have in this deck use, like, Delve, but I'm really not that kind of person. I, I love reusing, so the fact that this doesn't just make me exile my own stuff is just perfect for me. Um, Beth, Death Baron... It's really the death touch that does it for me. Um, just functional, dangerous, classic zombie master. Swamp walk and regenerating are uh, old school abilities. And if someone isn't quite prepared for it, doesn't know how they work, this can really work in my favor. I actually took out um, murder for this. Just because I realized, you know, it's, it's murder and it can target a planeswalker, you know, to life, but it's also got life link after I play it as a creature. So this is ju this is just a great if if you're running heroes downfall or murderer, just throw this thing in there instead because you get all that and more. Zombie trailblazer, you know, get, turning enemy lands into swamps. This thing and zombie lord can just run over opponents and and in a single turn just swing the game in my favor. Soulless one. Another, I love doing this after a board wipe. Um, for four mana, I've had these things get absolutely colossal, and I love it. Yeah. The Grave Defiler. Um, this is one of the Apocalypse uh, Heralds. Um, there were a lot of tribes in Apocalypse that basically have this ability. It comes into play, reveal top four cards. And you get to find four of a specific, uh, if you know, put all the uh, of a certain creature type. There's an elf one, there's a goblin one. And again, because of the low CMC of most of this deck, this is a great way to refill my hand with zombies or rip through unwanted lands. Crypt Gast. Once again, the, import the importance of ramping up that mana. You know. That's really what this is about. And the extort is nice. Undead Warchief. Value and the pump this gives to my zombies. Oof. Gotta love it. You know, one of my favorite cards from Scourge. Balthor the Defiled. If my deck runs red or red and black, 
or if my deck runs black or black and red, this has to be in here. This may be one of my absolute most favorite creature cards in all of Magic the Gathering. Um, because it's paid off for me so much. And it's exactly what a zombie wants to do. You know, mass, mass resurrection. Greyborn Muse, again, my one of my favorite ways of refilling my hand. Um, this can get insane with a lot of mana. I can, I can lose a lot of life off this. But I can play so many cards. And just, it. this is one of the big swingy cards of this deck that I absolutely love. Mages of the Coffers, again, you know, everything I said about Cabal Coffers, everything I said about um, Crypt Ghast, you know, just ramping out that mana. Corpse Connoisseur. The Unearth is what does it. The fact that I can basically entomb twice um, makes this so worth having. Gary. One of my favorite um, play it, kill it, resurrect it, play it, kill it, resurrect it. Uh, cards in this deck. This thing, I don't expect to play this just once. Um, this will really help me out in a lot of pinches. Again, Greyborn Muse. So, this has ended games for me. It's probably one of my favorite new zombies. Um, I love it. I play it whenever I can. Noxious Ghoul. Such a huge, vicious, vicious, vicious card. Um, I love playing this and then dropping a ton of zombies the minus one minus one is really underappreciated until you realize it kills gods it kills indestructible um it's not targeted removal so it, it just gets around so many problems corpse harvester again what have i said you know just just because this deck plays out its hand so quickly this de this thins my deck for swamps and gets me a zombie into my hand so it does all the things i want to do Talk about voted most often card put into the graveyard through Buried Alive. This thing can just really, you know, just because of its ability, so many people will leave you alone with their biggest creature. And I love that. Gem Palm Polluter. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. Um, last time I said that, a lot of people came at me. But, you know, almost nothing can counter cycling. You know, it's an ability. You need a you need, you know, counter target ability for that. Um, this thing with a full board is one of my favorite plays. Again, just like uh, Gary, this is one of those cards I want to cycle, bring back to my hand, cycle, bring back to my hand, over and over, go over again throughout the game. Um, I I utterly love it. Geth. If I didn't generate so much uh, mana with this deck, I'd really consider taking him out. Um, but, you know, whenever he's on the field, he always leaves an impression. He's also a 5-5 five, five Intimidate, which is not bad. But, you know, his ability to steal an opponent's creatures, you know, especially that bomb that I finally destroyed with one of my other removal spells. When he's on the board, he pays off. Grave Titan. Best non-zombie zombie card in the world you know it's the, you know i love the fact that it it enters the battlefield it triggers it attacks it triggers like th this guy is such an important cog in this machine um love him and th this is my top curve like that's the thing you know a lot of us whenever we think of if eh, he doesn't count i'm not gonna play him he um, he's only getting cycling and this thing only uh wants to be discarded into the graveyard so yeah, like creature-wise, this is my top curve. You know, that's that's one of the things I love about this deck. Um, McKay is the unhallowed, just undying and the plus one plus ones. Just he just makes it so difficult to deal with anything I have. So this is those are the uh, features. Let's move on to the enchantments. There's a few. Cover of darkness played this thing in 60 card zombie decks since onslaught and just as effective then as it is now necromancer stockpile i really love this card you know again running out of cards is clearly an issue this deck has had um so that's why i added cards like this um that that you know discarding a creature nets me a token really makes it 
Oversold Cemetery, just an automatic free way. I, I can drop this and forget about it until it becomes relevant, and then I can just get back stuff for free. It, it just makes combat a lot easier, knowing I can block, sacrifice, you know, kill things on my side of the board safely. Gravestorm, this is another great set it and forget it. Again, just a way to draw cards, and eventually, especially in the early game, people have nothing to do. And a lot of people just don't really feel this is bad enough to get rid of. That's something I like about this. People aren't afraid of this card. So I end up getting a lot of cards for it, and then eventually someone destroys it, realizing they should have done it a long time ago. Liliana's Mastery. I love this better than almost any other Anthem effect out there because this creates two zombies with it. Like, this is empirically just, in my opinion, one of the best value enchantments in the game for that. Feed the Swarm, because I'm mono black and I need to be able to destroy enchantments. It's just, every mono black deck needs that card. Buried Alive. You've seen this deck, you've seen what it does, you've seen the point of it. You know, for the record, I tend to choose Grave Crawler and um, Vengeful Pharaoh, and then something else depending on the situation. Mutilate, just like Noxious Cool, great board sweeper that gets around a lot of problems. Patriarch's Bidding, I'm going to be doing a lot of resurrecting. So, and there's the Patriarch actually in the art. So, this is just very powerful. My, one of my favorite things is to uh, drop a Bajuka Bog right before I do this. Hose someone's graveyard. Living Death, more of a clutch I'm in trouble card than something I plan around. Um, but still, gets the job done and it lets me, again, just do a lot of safe combat tricks. Block, kill all my stuff in order to survive. And then just flip the tables on my opponent. Zombie Apocalypse. <sighs> so yeah, the, it's not about destroying all humans, although that can be a thing. But just returning all zombie cards, you know, just... A personalized Patriarch's Bidding. It's just so great. Army of the Damned. Again, a lot of mana. Blowing this out. I have I can honestly say, if I've played this card, I've never lost. If I've played this card, I have never lost. Consume Spirit. You know, again, just, just removal that get nets me life. Black Sun Zenith. Another mass removal card. Again, there's a lot of mass resurrection, so... I, I'm really not afraid of board sweepers, mine or my opponents. Profane command, you know, killing people with all that all that mana into losing life, resurrecting, getting rid of something that might be annoying, or giving everything fear. You know, like this is every one of these has paid off for me before. Dread summons, another good X spell where I just net a ton of tokens off of it. Uh, Dark Salvation again. Tokens, and then just a great removal spell on top of that. Victim of Night. Yeah, there are going to be rare occasions where this doesn't work out, but again, it's so rare that it doesn't. Hero's Downfall. You know, like I said, I took I had Murder and Hero's Downfall in this deck. I took out Murder for Murderous Rider. You know, it's, you know Murder, but better. Sudden Spoiling. This is... I like this card for black decks, you know. It's, this turns combat on its head so that I'm winning instead of just letting my stuff die and resurrecting it the next turn. Empty the Pits, the only Delve card I actually have in this deck. Um, another big late game swinger. You know, I can use this and then Shepherd of Rod or something or a mass attack. Just I This is one of my least favorite cards because it... The delve is just so counterintuitive to this deck. But again, if it wins you the game, it wins you the game. That's, that's all I can say. And the last card's a Merit Lage token for... Uh, foil Merit Lage token for my uh, Dark Depths. So, Well, that is my zombie deck. Um, I hope you found this interesting, and if you're looking to build your own zombie deck, I hope I gave you some uh, fun ideas, and more importantly, insight as to why I chose each zombie. You know, a lot of people just like to list their cards. I really wanted to explain why I why each card is in there. I'm still... Grimoire of the Dead is the only one 
that uh, I'm iffy on. In fact, I just recently cracked. Uh, I recently cracked this thing. So, just the idea of you know venture. You know, I'm not sure I like the dungeon mechanic, but I love the idea of attacking for each opponent. Create a two-two token unless that person sacrifices a creature. I, I love this. Reminds me of uh, White Satoria, the Jund Dragon Cat. Um, that I, I'm sorely tempted. Well, that was it. This is my first deck tech video, and I hope to do more. Um, keeping with the theme before we go back to Innistrad, a whole bunch of zombies come out and half of this deck changes. I'm probably going to do my, um, Demir zombie deck next. So that'll be fun. You know, so those of you who like some of those great blue and black zombies or, like me, you just said, I saw a rooftop storm and said, I need to build around that. You know, that's exactly what I did. Um, that's exactly why my blue black zombie deck exists, rooftop storm. Um, you'll be able to see what I put into mine. It's not as optimized as this. This and Kalia are the two decks I've had the longest. I've put the most into them, most financial value into them. So it, it's, it's not going to be this potent. But it's still a fun, brutal deck. So, um, thank you for joining me. I really hope for feedback on this um, as I try the, to range the content on my channel, expand a little bit. And uh, I hope you guys stay tuned uh, for the next one. Thank you for joining me, and bye.